Well, I'm joined now in the studio by NBA Deputy Commissioner Adam Silver. You must be uh, very excited about all of this. But why now? Why are you bringing the games that we had exhibition games in Europe right. before? But why the games that really count coming to Europe now? Well, we've played four friendlies preseason games in London so far in the O2 Arena here. And we have a unique circumstance. You have the O2 Arena, which is a state-of-the-art modern arena run by AEG, which also runs the Staples Center and other arenas in the United States. So they're, in effect, the perfect promoter. They know the league well. You have the build-up to the 2012 Olympics here. And you have a growing fan base who, of basketball fans and, and an enormously passionate sports culture here in Britain as well. And so then why are these teams, the Raptors, the Canadian Raptors and the Nets, a good matchup for Europe? Well, I, they're probably two of our most international teams. The Nets, of course, the New Jersey Nets, are the only team owned by a gentleman from mm -hmm. outside of North America, and that, of course, is Mikhail Prokhorov. Prokhorov. Mm -hmm. And then in the Raptors, you have the only North American team not based in the United States. But they're perhaps not the best performing teams in the NBA, right? All our teams <laughs> are best performing. I okay. mean, they, they happen to not have the best records at the immediate moment in the cycle of the NBA season. But they're two terrifically talented um, competitive teams who, and, and every game has enormous significance for these teams. And you have coaches and players all playing for their jobs as well. So the idea is to globalize the brand, to, to internationalize basketball, but how much passion is there really for the NBA over here? It has a huge global following, right? right? Or at least it's done pretty well in China, but it's struggled to make an impact in the UK. You sound skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you see, because we're soccer fans, I right. shouldn't say that. I'll get smacked for saying right. that. Football fans here We, we call it football. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a fair question. I mean, we saw enormous, the buildup of popularity back in 1992 around the Dream Team and the Barcelona Olympics, of course. And there's been a lull, but we see an opportunity right now. I said one thing that's changed significantly is the onset of social media. And I, we find that our young fans are are huge engagers. I, I, I was listening before, you were talking about the valuation of Facebook. My God, you know, if we could just get a small piece of that in the NBA, but among Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, another property you were talking about earlier. Those you can use fans, all of these to your benefit in, in globalizing the NBA, but the UK perhaps your most, most challenging market here in Europe? I don't know about our, our most challenging. I mean, again, we have the benefit of the Olympics coming to the UK and here in London, so people in 2012 will see the best basketball in the world. I mean, unlike mm. football, where presumably the World Cup is the very best football competition in the world, from a global standpoint, the Olympics, rather than our world championship, is still the best global competition in our sport. And you know, very briefly, I can't let you go without getting your thoughts on something a little bit different. The NFL lockout playing out in the States right now. What's on your mind? What are you thinking as you see this story unfold? I mean, I hope as a fan of American football and as a sports executive as well, that they settle their differences. Um, I, I think they happen to be going first. Their agreement is expiring today. Ours doesn't expire until the end of June. There are some similarities in our issues in terms of the kinds of issues that they're discussing. Mm. So I think from our standpoint, it would create, I think, additional optimism among if our they fans could resolve if they issues. were able to reserve, resolve their problems. So it's something we're watching very closely. Adam Silver, Deputy Commissioner, CEO of the National Basketball Association. Thanks so much for coming in. Great to talk to you.